In this episode, I wanna share with you the difference in the price in going for F1 or IndyCar. Hello race drivers, it's Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show and we're talking money, specifically how much it costs to go for these big routes of F1 and IndyCar and comparing them and see which one's cheapest. I think you know which one is, but I wanna get down to how much it actually costs. And the question that inspired this video was from Lee, and here it is. Paraphrasing what he said, but he asked me on email, it's hard to find out exactly how much it costs to get to F1. Is it cheaper for me to aim for IndyCar instead? Well, that's, let's have a look. Let's just have a look. I'm going to throw up some diagrams now. If you're, if you're watching on video, it's great. If you're listening on the podcast, you won't be able to see this. So you're going to hear loads of figures being thrown at you. But let's talk Formula One first. I put the route out as a pyramid so you can see we climb our way to the top and we're gonna use the very traditional route of F4, F3, F2 and F1. Now there's different championships you can use to get to F1, but I wanna show you the actual structure that they want you to walk, the, the most popular one. So you start off at F4, now I'm gonna run you through the prices. For a standard season in F4, we're talking around $550,000. So you as the driver have got to pay a team that much money over a season. It'd be split up into nice installments. You have to pay the team that for them to run your car, get it there, prepare you for the race weekends. And probably they, there's probably about 20 test days involved in that. And that's pretty bug standard. Some drivers are spending a lot more than that because they do the championship in UAE that's in January, February. They do that, that's another 100, 150 grand. And it kind of warms them up. And other drivers are paying even more than that. Now we're getting towards a million. Some drivers are spending a million dollars on F4 because not only do they do UAE championship, not only do they do the Italian, just for example, they maybe do a few Euro Cup rounds, a Euro 4 championship, and also they do like 50 test days. So you keep stacking these on and you're paying for a coach, you're paying for management. Before you know it, seven figures has just shown up your bank balance or it's just it's gone out of your bank balance so this 550 is pretty much what you can do it for now there's some people doing it for less say if it's a team that's giving you a really good deal because you're a driver that's won before and they want you in their car and the team's probably not the top team but you know mid-range you probably get cheaper than 550 so you can get through but i'm just saying 550 because that's a good ballpark figure something to prepare the ticker for the heart to overcome the shock that how much this sport costs. Now that's just rung number one of the ladder or on that pyramid. Let's move to the next one. F3 is $1.3 million. Now it's to be fair, it can be 900 again if you get a deal and the team actually wants to put some money in for you. That's nice of them, but it doesn't happen that often. Pretty much everyone now is paying over a mil. Some are now creeping towards the one and a half mil if the team is very successful. And maybe you as a driver are not very successful, so they're taking a bit of pain money. They're making you pay more if your results the year before are not great. It's just the way it is. You've got to create your own value in this sport, right? So if you want to bring that price down, you as a driver have got to have good results. Then you can say to a team, right, I'm not going to pay you what you're asking. I'm going to pay you less, but I'm going to win. That's a little tip there, but you've got to have the results. Right, so so far it's been 550 grand for your first season in F4 and 1.3 mil for your season in F3. Then we move up to F2. A season of Formula 2 is $2.3 million. It's racking up now. This is a big one. And if we just look at that now, the amount of money that somebody has to part ways for you to race is phenomenal. And I want you just to pause right now because this is quite a lot of money. In fact, it's $4.1 million so far in just doing one season in F4, one season in F3, one season in F2. That's if you don't repeat a year. If you repeated all of them, it's going to be 8 mil. This is how expensive it is just to be knocking on the door at F1. It doesn't mean you're going to get to F1. It just means you've paid your way to play in the junior ranks that lead up to F1. You need good results. You need some serious sponsorship. And if you want to get like a young junior program to pay for you, that's difficult as well because you're going to have to prove yourself. You're going to have to get the results. So the biggest thing I can say about when you go in this route is... If you can muster up 
an amazing amount of a million dollars, it's like, right, how can I get the attention of a junior pro program, an F1 junior program, to pay some way? Because they don't pay for all of it. They pay for probably half or 50% or 30% of the budget. But if I'm to attract one, so they'll pay for some of my racing, I need results. That's why I always tell people, if you can't quite afford these big championships, just get yourself into a small one and dominate it. Become the kind of driver that people look at and say, okay, it's a small championship, but that person dominated. I want them. I want to offer them a deal. I want to get them in my car. And then you'll get a deal and you can get these prices down. But if you're just rocking up with a check, this is how much it costs. So let's turn that. So you can see that now it's like 4.1 million just to knock on the door of F1. It'll be more if you're doing more testing. It'll be more if you're doing multiple years. You just keep adding them digits up. You can easily spend eight mil before you even get looked at by F1. Um, let's turn our attention to IndyCar. Now the structure for IndyCar is the first one, their version of F4 is called USF 2000, you probably know. Their version of F3 is USF Pro 2000. Then you've got NXT, which is like their F2 championship, which is Indy Lights, and then it's IndyCar. So again, it's a four tier system. There are championships underneath, USF Juniors, you've got the Skip Barber School, and they all offer nice little scholarships to help you get in, which is really good, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's talk figures. USF 2000 is around about $400,000. Again, it's quite a wide bracket, really, to be fair, because some teams will offer you a deal, some will charge more if you're testing a lot, so it's really difficult to say every team's gonna charge you the same. A top team who's gonna give you like 20 days worth of testing, which is really rare, in the US, they don't test as much as they do in Europe, just because of track availability and it's all spread out and how it's all structured, there's not much, not much testing. So just allow for 400. So it's a little bit cheaper than F4 at the minute. Okay, we're going the right way. Then you step up a category to USF 2000, Pro 2000, sorry, it used to be called Indy Pro or Pro Mazda. That's around about $700,000. It's around half of what F3 costs. So now F3 or the F1 route's really pulling away in terms of how much it costs. Then we go to the next one, the next championship, and it's called Next, and that's about $1.4 million. So the total of all of this is $2.5 million. Now look at them side by side, you can see it's you know nearly double if you want to go for F1. And that's really the reality of it all. And still, I want you to look at these figures. I'll put them back up. Look at these two figures and just understand how hard it's going to be for somebody you know or somebody you don't know even harder to put up the money for that. I can't see how drivers are doing it. Even though the grids are absolutely full, it just shows you how much money is out there. The grids are full. But I know for a fact that Liam Lawson, for example, who's just dipped his toe into F1, they don't have this sort of money, but they worked with somebody, Grant McDonald, who, who worked tires, tirelessly on getting these investors to help him, getting these investors to put money into the, his racing so they can have a share of his, of his, obviously, his pot when he makes it. That's what they had to do. They got lots of different sponsors. It took a lot of work. So not everybody is from money. I know people watch this sort of thing and they say, oh, it's easy if you got cash. But honestly, Liam Lawson didn't. Esteban Ocon, Ocon didn't. Bottas, no. These weren't wealthy people. They just did really good in the lower, lower ranks. They got the attention of people who could pay for them. They kept, you know, people, their fathers and management were constantly probing companies and people who could help and going to uh, F1 junior programs to help. And they just about scrape enough money together to pay for the racing. So it is possible, but you need the results. Like I always say, you need to win in order to even create that opportunity. So again, start with the small championships if you haven't got the money. Now, the difference. So you say it's half the, you know, it's nearly double the amount going the F1 route. And it's probably actually harder to get in, to be in the top 20 in the world. In F1, it's difficult because there's not many seats opening up. So I'd say it's actually, even if you've got the cash and you've got the results, it's still hard to get into F1 because your timing has to be right with the right team when somebody's ret retiring themselves or they're finished with F1 and you're just there waiting. So it's like lightning striking, it really is. It's really difficult. Even if you win F2, 
doesn't mean you're going to get into F1. You'll see. Okay, so it's double the price, nearly, of the IndyCar route. But there's something I really like about the IndyCar route is the scholarship prize fund. For USF 2000, you get $440,000 if you're the champion. You get that money, it's like a gift voucher really, to spend on the next tier of the ladder, USF Pro 2000. So you virtually you get your money back and a bit more. You probably spent that because you've got a coach and you've got flights and, and uh, hotel bills and all this. But you get that to go towards next year. For a 700 grand budget, the championship give you over 440 grand. Thank you very much. It's going to help. Then if you win USF Pro 2000, you get 664,000 for next, for, the, for Indy Lights if you're old school. And if you win Indy Lights, you get 850 grand. Now, when I won Indy Lights with Ed Jones back in the day, 2017, 18, whenever it was, he got a million dollars towards IndyCar. And that pretty much paid for all the month of May. So all the testing in, in the Indy, for the Indy 500, it, uh, the actual IMS race and some t other test events and things. So you use it as a gift voucher basically, or the championship do, and they give it to an IndyCar team and say, right, we've got 850 grand, give the driver 850 grand's worth of, uh, of seat time and however they spend it, usually means the Indy 500 and some other fluffy bits on the side. And then you're in, you're in IndyCar. That's perfect. I wish F1 would do the same. Just give the champion at least half the budget towards the following year. And then the second guy, a quarter of the budget. So you're kind of helping the drivers get up there. It, I'd love, it, love them to do it and it should happen, but it isn't at the moment. IndyCar has done it for a while. The road to Indy used to be called. They, they've done it for 10, 20 years now. So if you haven't got that much money, you've got more chance doing the IndyCar route than you have the F1 route. And I'd say the skill levels of the drivers, they're similar. You've got top F2 drivers going over to IndyCar and they're doing pretty well. They start knocking on the door of a top 10 fairly soon, which would be the same in F1 if the cars were as equal as they are in IndyCar, if they were in F1. So I'd say the driver level is still really high in, in IndyCar. A top IndyCar driver would do fine fine in uh, F1 and you can see the likes of Grosjean they haven't come over from F1 into IndyCar and just dominated not at all they're both high levels so don't worry you know I mean or I'll say don't worry if you're thinking of going IndyCar because it's easier think again it's not it's slightly cheaper it's a different style of racing it's uh, more old school the circuits are more old school and stuff like that but it depends what you prefer but if budget's tight, and I say tight, this is still, we're talking about millions. If the budget's tighter, and you think that you could get sponsors to be more interested in going stateside, then IndyCar, definitely. So that's it, Lee and everybody else. You can see the different figures of how much it costs to be a race driver on the F1 or the IndyCar route. I hope this has been some value. Better get to work and get that money in. <laughs>